Hello, Gorilla Marketers. We're going to be talking this lesson about the Google Data Highlighter extensively. We're going to touch on the Bing SEO Analyzer, and we're going to prepare you for Google Shopping. And uh, so that's what this lesson is all about. It's getting you geared up. In the last couple of lessons, we talked about the product listing, some little secrets that you can put in there uh, with your product listing to help get you ranked better. And this is... <coughs> A pretty important lesson as far as you know getting Google to understand your site all right so let's get right into it now the prerequisites for this uh, let me uh, go ahead and okay so the prerequisites are before you perform what's contained in this lesson you'll have to be have the Google search console set up with your website okay and if you do not have it set up on your website, please go to my website, a1websitepro.com, to the SERP and indexing your website on the Internet. Uh, we have video instructions and step-by-step -step instructions on how to set that up. And also, if you have not set up your Bing Webmaster Tools yet, please see using Bing Keyword Research feature on A1 Website Pro and get that set up with your website, too. If you have any issues or anything, Feel free to contact me. I'll help you get a setup. Okay, so there's step-by-step -step instructions there to help you set those things up. All right, so first of all, what is the Google Data Highlighter? Okay, the Google Data Highlighter helps Google understand your specific web pages. And remember, websites are not indexed. Web pages are, okay? So this is an intelligent tool, and it's also interactive. What you do is highlight sections of a web page and tell Google what they are. The tool requires a free Google Search Console account, so you can see why you need to have this set up before you begin this lesson. So let's look at the overview. It's located in the, uh, the Google Data Highlighter is located in the Google Search Console, and it's geared toward articles, book reviews, events, local businesses, movies, products, restaurants, software applications, and TV episodes, okay? You can tag items within web pages like the title, featured image, author, category, date published, ratings, and much more. So let's go over the instructions on tagging products in the Google Data Highlighter. So depending on the post, Google will ask you to highlight different information. Articles will be different than products, okay? Products will be different than TV episodes and so on. That's how it works. It, the, what it asks for is going to be different. For instance, uh, on products, it asks for a price. Well, there is no price on TV episodes, okay? So let's begin the highlight process on our website, and I have a guinea pig website that we're going to be working with throughout this entire uh, guerrilla marketing course. So go to the Google Search Console and click in Search Appearance, and then underneath that you'll see a menu uh, item, Data Highlighter, and that's what you want to click on, okay? Scroll down on that page after you load that up and look for this blue button that says Start Highlighting. Now you'll see a box appear that asks for a URL, a type of information to highlight, and tagging option. It's going to look like this. There's a little box, put your URL, information to highlight, and so on. Now, since we're going to do products, we want to go to a product URL. You know, go to a specific page. And for this particular one, I'm going to enter K Bath and Body. You notice this product here orange tulip, shea butter, soap, bar, pick scent. Okay, so that's what I have entered in there. And I've selected products. And then for tag, I'm going to tag this page and uh, uh, others like it, okay? So I could take care of thousands of pages by doing this, okay? And then you just click the OK button. Now, product pages are set up different than article pages like we talked about. Notice the product URL in the URL string. See, product. So the layout from an article page is different from a product page. For instance, an article page doesn't have a price on it, right? It's just an article. 
but a product page would, and that's why this is important. The purpose of the data highlighter is to tell Google where these certain attributes are located on that particular web page. Are they top right, top you know, bottom, uh, left bottom, right bottom, so on and so forth. <clears throat> now, this is what the page looks like that we're going to tell Google to load in the highlighter. Okay. That's basically what it is. So here we see a title, here we see a price, you know, here we see an SKU number, here's an image, okay? So those, now on a different website, the image could be over on the right, and the price could be on the left, and so on and so forth. The Google Data Highlighter now loads the page into their software platform. On the right, we can see the information that Google's looking for. And these are under my data items on the right hand side of the page. You're going to see name, image, pricing, product ID, and so on. And this is kind of what it looks like. It's going to load, you know, let's say this is the first page, and, and it's going to ask you to highlight these different things, right? And then this box over here is your data items. Those are the things that they're looking for on this particular page, and you're going to tell them where those things are located. Okay, so let's begin the highlighting process. Put your mouse over the name or title, and you'll notice that Google will highlight it in yellow. And then a drop-down box will appear, and you'll choose Name. So here's a copy of that. So as soon as I started highlighting this particular the title, I would select Name. Let Google know that, hey, yeah, this is the name of this product. Okay. Now notice that my data items update on the right hand side of the page. So as soon as I highlighted that, you'll see that under the product, okay, here's the name, Orange Tulip Shea Butter Soap pick, uh, Bar Pick Scent. Now keep repeating the process until you've filled out all of the data fields. Now don't worry if you do not have a field for that data highlighter. Okay, leave it blank if it's missing or you can't highlight it somehow. Don't get bent out of shape, just skip it. Okay. But when you're done, when you're finished, click Done there. Now you're going to see another box appear. Google has found 28 other pages that are similar to the one that we highlighted. We can then give this page a set name. Google suggests calling the page set products. So I'm going to leave it that way. So here it is. You can see that Google found 28 uh, pages you know that are similar to the products and notice the name that they suggested they're going to the page set we're going to call it products and then we click create page set okay Google will then load other pages to make sure that they're understanding the field correctly so if you have orange shea butter soap on one you might have red shea butter soap on the next one so if everything looks good just keep on clicking that red next button Okay, and if it doesn't, go ahead and, uh, you know, put your mouse in there and highlight and say, hey, you know, no, that's not my title. This is my title down here. So that's, you could correct Google as you go to help them better understand the page and the layout. So you could go through several pages this way. You know, if Google thinks your page needs further review, you're going to see a pop-up box that says, hit this, further review needed. More examples are required to learn the pattern of your site. And then you click continue reviewing. And you <clears throat> will continue on that process until you see a red done button in the top right. Okay. Once you click that done button, uh, you're going to see at the end there a publish, a pub publish button. So you'll click the publish button. Now, you'll see a little message at the end telling you that all your pages, you know, are set. That is published. Okay, well, what does this do? Well, the next time Google crawls your site, it's going to understand the layout of that site. It's going to know where the price is, know where the title is, so on and so forth, okay? So that's, that's the benefits of having that data highlighter because if Google didn't understand it before, oh, okay, that, that's the title, oh, that's the price, oh, that's the rating, and so on and so forth, you'll, uh, you're giving Google a better understanding of what's going on there. Okay, this brings us to the Bing SEO Analyzer. All right, the Bing 
SEO analyzer gives tips for Bing search engine. Okay, the, analy the analyzer will analyze those tags in each web page, and you're going to receive recommendations from Bing using this tool. It's not as interactive or as, as thorough as the Google Data Highlighter. The Bing SEO Analyzer will give you SEO suggestions, like if you have multiple H1 tags, it will give you a warning, or if you're missing alt tags on images, it will tell you. Uh, it will let you view your page code, and so on and so forth. Now, we're not going to cover the Bing SEO Analyzer deeply. We're going to do that in a later uh, lesson, so we can uh, concentrate on more what it is. But it's important that you have it set up. Okay, so now prepare for Google Shopping. We're going to prepare for Google Shopping. Google Shopping will get your products placed everywhere, okay? Your products will show when users type in your product names. It requires a free AdWords and search console, Google Search Console accounts. Please make sure that you have these set up before the next lesson. Now, we have video instructions to help you set up your free AdWords account and they're included in this post where the, the, if you uh, click in the description box below uh, you can go directly to this post and get those video instructions on how to set up a free AdWords account. Now the Google Search Console that's where you manage your websites and you can manage several web websites in the Google Search Console just not one. Several things can be tracked in the Google Search Console. There are many search optimization tools as well in the console that we'll be covering later. But if you go to that post, uh, you are going to see a lecture there on the Google Search Console if you want to get a jump on things. In the next lesson, this is what it all culminates to. We're going to we're we're get we got our website ready, we got our product pages ready, we got our Google Search Console set up, our AdWords set up. So in the next lesson, this is. This is where we're going to go in depth, is this Google Shopping. I'm going to show you how to get your products in there, how to submit a feed, you know, how to do, do a dynamic feed if you're in a WordPress content management system, a Zencart management system, so on and so forth. So everything has been building up to this particular lesson. I've, had, I've tried to do these in steps so that you guys would be able to to not have to go back and say, oh, well, why, why didn't you cover that first, you know. So I tried to do this in a consecutive order so that you would, uh, and bring out the important things so that you're not going to have to backtrack and do things. So this is all culminated up to getting your products uh, indexed in Google Shopping. Okay, this is Max with A1 Website Pro. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to email me or give me a call.